Hello people, John here. We did an interesting experiment on Friday as we were wrapping up the month of July. That was the 30th of July. We had the uh, 0.7 meter telescope up and running and doing some photometry on a nova in the constellation of Volpecula. And when we were done collecting that data, remembered that the constellation of Draco was high in the sky over over the pole. It's about positive 66 declination, which puts it in a rather um, difficult, somewhat challenging location to image, but the 0.7 meter is on an alt as mount, which allows us to do uh, things that more traditional equatorial mounts cannot do. And one of those great things is imaging around the pole, even though things are moving in uh, tighter arcs as they get closer to the pole star. This is Abel 2218, a galaxy cluster um, that is approximately 2.1 billion light years away. And so our full frame image from the 0.7 meter is in monochrome, the black and white image that you see here. And on top of it is a rather famous image from the Hubble Space Telescope in full color. I thought it'd be an interesting experiment to see how how deeply the 0.7 meter located pretty much at sea level here in Exeter, New Hampshire uh, can see, how faint these objects can get, and to see what a comparison would look like with something like the Hubble Space Telescope imagery. And of course, the Hubble orbiting Earth has no atmosphere to deal with, so it has obviously better images than what we get here. So here's the image. First, let's, let's turn off the Hubble Space Telescope layer and then zoom in on, on the galaxy cluster. And we're going to bring this to 100% scale. This is 50%. Here's 66.7. And here is 100% scale. So in the center here is, is the Abel galaxy cluster. And there are other galaxies like this one, which are notably much closer to us than, than the Abel 2218 cluster. My cursor right now is hovering over uh, the more massive galaxy located toward the center of the cluster, which is also the galaxy responsible for causing the gravitational lenses of galaxies that are much more distant and actually not visible in our photo, as we shall see. So, yeah, turn on the Hubble Space Telescope image and let you take a look at that in comparison and maybe I'll fade out and fade in a little bit a couple of times and let you decide what is visible and what is not visible between the two. So on and off, on and off, and again. And if you're interested, let's we'll zoom in just a bit more. 200%. You can see these arcs of uh, gravitationally lensed galaxies in the distance. And there are quite a few of them here. You can see the massive galaxy in the center. Keep an eye on one of these gravitationally lensed galaxies and I will turn on and off the Hubble Space Telescope image again. And you can see that none of those gravitationally lensed galaxies is visible. Here none of them are visible at all. They're, they're all too faint. Maybe if we did a few more hours of integration, we would be able to see some of them, but they are too faint in this one hour exposure that we have here. So a good comparison. That is the, the full comparison. And to give you a, a full scale, we can zoom out just a bit more and let you see uh, the, the full image that we took in comparison to the region of sky that the Hubble Space Telescope sees. Um, noticeable difference as well. Our telescope is seeing about 25 arc minutes square, which is almost about the size of a full moon. It's actually just a bit smaller than the full moon in the sky. So the full moon would just exceed the boundaries of our square frame here, just to give you another size comparison. There you have it. I hope that was helpful.
it certainly does demonstrate the capacity of an orbiting space-based telescope to that of a ground-based telescope, particularly one that is close to uh, the ocean.